Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about section 4.4 on optimization problems. And let's look at problem number 13. We'd like to find positive numbers x and y satisfying the equation x times y equals 12 so that the sum 2x plus y is as small as possible. Now, typically when I do an optimization problem, I'd like to start out by drawing some sort of a picture. But since in this problem there's really no picture that goes with the equations x times y equals 12 and 2x plus y, so let's not worry about that so much. Um, but the second thing that we would do after we drew a picture, which isn't so relevant in this case, is we ask the question, what is it we're trying to make big or small here? And really this is the key element of all optimization problems. If you don't answer this part of the question correctly, then you have no idea what you're doing. Okay, uh, And a lot of times you might do an optimization problem and you just feel like, man, I'm just lost on this problem. And the reason you're feeling that way is because you haven't answered the number one question you need to answer when you do an optimization problem. And that is, what is it we're trying to make big or small here? So really read through the problem and ask yourself, what is it I'm trying to make big or small? And I think if we read this through, we see that uh, so that the sum of 2x plus y is as small as possible. What's small? 2x plus y. So we're trying to make that sum, 2x plus y, as small as we possibly can. So I'm going to call that something. I'm just going to call it s. And s is equal to 2x plus y. And so s, which is equal to 2x plus y, I want to make that as small as possible. Now, the problem here is that I have more than one variable over on the right-hand side. I've got s, which is what I'm trying to make small. And ideally, I'd like s to be in terms of one variable, not two. Because as soon as I get s into one variable, then I can use all my knowledge of calculus and finding maxes and mins on it. But since it's in two variables right now, I'd like to get it into one. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to ask the question, so what is the extra information that is given in this problem? Okay, is there any extra stuff that's going to help me to put this into one variable? And the answer is yes, there is a little extra information right over here. We're told that x times y equals 12. Now, we're not trying to maximize or minimize this part. It's just some extra information that x times y is 12. And so I can use that to my advantage. I have that x times y equals 12. This is my extra information. And so I could solve for x or for y here. And so let's say, uh, let's just solve this for y. So I get that y is equal to 12 divided by x. Now that I've got this extra information, I can take that value of y, plug it in right up here, and I get a new way of writing s. Except in this new way, s is equal to 2x plus 12 over x. Now I've gotten rid of the y s is written in one variable, and that's exactly what I need to be able to do some calculus. Now I can take the derivative of s with respect to the variable x, set it equal to zero, solve for x, do all the things that I'm used to doing for finding critical points, and then see if it's a local max or min. Okay, so let's take the derivative. I get that the derivative of s with respect to x is equal to 2 plus, let's see, this is 12x to the minus 1. So the derivative would be <clears throat> minus 12x to the minus 2, or negative 12 over x squared. Now I'd like to set that equal to 0. So I get 0 equals 2 minus 12 over x squared. I could move the 12 over x squared to the other side. So I get 12 over x squared is 2 cross multiply that and I get that 12 is equal to 2x squared. So uh, x squared is equal to 6 
and x would be equal to plus or minus the square root of 6. Now remember, go back to the beginning of the problem, and it says find positive numbers x and y. So I'm not interested in any negative number for x. So I can just get rid of the negative, and I just get that x must be the square root of 6. Okay, if x is the square root of 6, then y we can figure out from either one, uh, this condition right here. We know that x times y is 12. So since we know that x times y equals 12, and that x is the square root of 6, then the square root of 6 times y is 12, and y is 12 over square root of 6, or if you don't like to have uh, <coughs> square roots in your denominator, you could always multiply top and bottom by the square root of 6, and you get 12 root 6 over 6, or if you prefer, 2 root 6 for y. Okay, since this is the only critical value, and I know that somewhere in here this thing must have um, a minimum, then that minimum must occur at the critical value. And the critical value occurs when x is equal to square root of 6 and where y is equal to 2 square roots of 6. So I'm done. I found my x and y that make the value 2x plus y as small as possible.